crap, my last card is backwards. Woo! Teamy talk and teamy from the fall. Sleepy Hollow. So Sleepy Hollow started this week, and <clears throat> I had a few people uh, mention that they were curious to hear what my thoughts were on the show, so I thought I would share them. <laughs> Yay! Um, it's one of the new series for fall 2013, and what it does is it takes the Sleepy Hollow, le the Legend of Sleepy Hollow, and puts it in current day Sleepy Hollow. I don't know if Sleepy Hollow is an actual place, or if it's like a fictional place, um, but anyway, it's oh, somewhere in the States. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing northeast, <laughs> northeast, yeah, somewhere northeast, yeah, right. I don't know. I'm Canadian. I don't need to know American geography. <laughs> tell me where the Yukon is, and I'll tell you where Sleepy Hollow is. Um, so <laughs> anyway, so Sleepy Hollow. It's actually I really enjoyed this episode, season one, episode one pilot. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed it. it what, what I was curious about the show is that it has a great sort of spooky vibe, great atmosphere to it, has a supernatural feel, and then I was concerned because I was worried that it could be very uh, historical, Americana, and procedural. So those are my concerns going in, but loving the sort of s spooky vibe. Well, what it does is it actually takes the character of Ichabod Crane from 1760-ish. They see 250 years ago, so I'm just going, I just did reverse math, and um, brings him into current day. And also brings Headless Horseman to current day. So what happens is, of course, you know, Ichabod Crane doesn't, you know, is, is just like, you know, what is all this, you know, and because Headless Horseman causing trouble, Ichabod Crane, people think he's loony, they don't know who he is, they take him in, they think he is the reason for the chaos the Headless Horseman is creating. So, and then, so that's sort of the historical angle to it, and then anchoring it to current day, we have Abby Mills, who's a lieutenant, and uh, just about to go off to FBI land, but, you know, kind of really wants to understand what actually happened. She believes Ichabod did not do the things he said he did, you know, and so off they go to try and figure out what really happened. So that's great premise. Really liked it. Enjoyed the, I enjoyed, um, what did I enjoy about it? I thought there was a lot of cleverness in this one. There was a lot of humor. There was a lot of pretty direct, you could tell it was going to, like, you know, that's a, definitely going to be a joke that's going to happen, humor, as well as some more subtle humor. Um, y with the fish out of water, you know, he's at, from a different time. You're definitely going to get that. It's a great opportunity for some stuff like that. And uh, Some of the stuff they even showed in the trailer, um, and so that I, I, I liked. I also like that it's, it's pretty, it's, it's hokey. Like, I'm not going to joke. There is a hokey element to it, and the humor helps with that. But it also is very dark. Like, I was, this is a 9, this is on at 9 o'clock, and that, it's pretty dark for 9 o'clock. So, but, again, I liked it. I liked that they went for it, that it's true, it feels true to the story. Um, you know, you're talking about a headless horseman, so there's definitely headlessness. Um, so, yeah, like, go with it. Like, keep that keep that going. So I enjoyed that. Um, the things on the pro side of things, the guy who plays Ichabod Crane is great. His acting is great. The character is interesting. There's, you can feel there's a lot of history. Ha ha. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, a groaner. Um, you know, with his character, and he works it. He actually feels more comfortable um, with the realization of being out of time, as opposed to anyone even considering the fact that he is from another time. So that's an interesting dynamic. Um, I also thought it was pretty gutsy, but that can might come into the cons as well. It plays a lot of cards here. Like, it throws a lot of cards on the table. There, a lot happens in this first episode. So hopefully that will turn out for the best. <laughs> um, the hokiness, I would put that in the pro side for sure. Really enjoyed it, um, and I also really liked, um, in terms of the acting, I really liked uh, uh, Katya Winter, who plays Katrina. I've seen her in, uh, I saw her in <laughs> a horrible movie, Arena, with Kellen Lutz and Samuel L. Jackson. The movie's truly horrible, but she's very good in it. <laughs> I reviewed that over at Before the Dawn with Marina. <laughs> Wow, that was that was a challenge to get through. Anyway, so I she wasn't in this episode too much, but I'm hoping to see more of her. Um, and also, 
the effects are really good on this one, and I really appreciate that. And it's weird because with atmospheric ones, you can definitely, you know, sometimes it can get a little too atmospheric, you know, and get a, again the hokiness. But that's not where the hokey. I don't know if that's where the hokiness comes in. I don't know. There is some stuff where it just kind of feels like, you know, the the sky is red, and it feels like an old episode of Star Trek. And it's like, why is the sky red? <laughs> like, I don't understand. But I liked it, so I'm like, I don't care. I like. It. So there were weird things like that that really worked, and then you know some of the stuff that was really dark, it was really worked as well. Somehow they played the like played those tones really really well. And also, and this might just be a, a pro for me in particular. It is not a procedural. It does not feel like a procedural at all. It's hard to say in the grand scheme of things because this is sort of like the setup episode to be introduced to the characters and sort of the longer story and stuff like that. But there is no indication that this is going to be a procedural. This looks like a long arc, multifaceted, layered story. That being said, the con category could be a long arc layered religious story. <laughs> now, I'm not sure about that. It's too early to say, but they're, you know, good, it could be religious. And they could just be using it for story, or they could be using it for more. It kind of strays from, you know, traditional you know, as well, so it's a little too early to tell. But for me, if this becomes a morality tale as opposed to a mystery, then I'm going to be out of there. Like, so it'll be, so I, <laughs> like, again, cautiously optimistic, enjoyed this first episode, hope they keep going where they're going, but I'm not entirely sure where they are going. So that's, for me, the cautionary part is, like, if it just ends up feeling, like, totally religious, then not the case not super the sense I get of it. It wouldn't be my prediction. I feel like they're using that for story elements and they're mixing it in with some other things. And for me, that could be okay. But if all of a sudden it's like totally religious, bye-bye. So there's that. <laughs> so time will tell. I will definitely keep watching. I would definitely recommend it for people who like spooky fare, you know, who like long arc shows. Um, the one thing, though, is that th th because I felt like they did play a fair amount of cards on this one, I, th I thought they got maybe a little over gutsy on some of the things they said that kind of, <laughs> you know, suggest a long arc. I'm like, really? That long? Really? I'm like, okay. That's pretty, that's pretty surprising. So, uh, I don't I won't, I won't get into specifics about that. If you want a spoiler-filled review of this, um, me and my sister Susie will be reviewing it over at Hexed, and that podcast will go up on the night of, <laughs> of September 18th, which is when I'm recording this. But yeah, so if you want spoiler-filled and predictions and all that stuff, we'll dig in. Um, but this is sort of more of just a, gener a general reaction to the first episode, and I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it, because I definitely would recommend it. I think there is, you know, and I think you probably can get a sense from this episode whether or not you would like it or not. I, for me, I love the combination of the great atmosphere and the humor and the characters and the history. And there is a fair amount of depth and mystery as well. And all of that really worked for me. So I'll definitely keep watching. Yeah, for sure. It kind of feels, in, in a weird way, it kind of feels like a more accessible version of Grimm because you have a cop, you know, and you have like sort of this weird you know, unexplainableness. So you have sort of like the cop structure and then the unexplainableness and, and where the two meet and, and, you know, who's on which side kind of thing. So, and not that Grimm is entirely...